Happy Saturday! Have you heard of River of Life? So currently we are situated at this site is River of Life at Kuala Lumpur. So often when we heard about Kuala Lumpur is the capital of Malaysia and the name of the Kuala Lumpur is representing Kuala is the river mouth, Lumpur is the swampy area. But today I would like to share you a little bit story, the history and it wasn't many been told. So Kuala, yes, is a river mouth. Lumpur is not actually reflecting swampy area. So in those days, the word Lumpur is come from a very ancient language. It means settlement. So it was just a group of settlements settling down by the riverside. So in the 1840s, what happened was in the map of the British government officer, they have actually drawing out and show that the tin mining site it was situated in this area just by the Lumpur stream. But unfortunately today, I can't show you where is the Lumpur stream anymore. So today, I would like to draw your attention a little bit. So what is so important about the river? In many ancient towns, big cities, royal kingdom, always started by the riverside. Why? Because in those days, everywhere what you want to travel, the most commonly is by the waterway. So you can land it in the big river mouth by the sea and that's where you're slowly exploring and you develop the town. So by the river, it's not just only important as a road but it's also for the recreation purpose and not forget for the economic, especially commercial. So today we have like floating market also and agriculture. So today when we think about the river, right, oftenly the food is so important by the riverside and that is why in those days people love to set up their settlement. So not only because of the clear water fish but also for the agriculture purpose such as like you can plant vegetable, fruits, you need all planted by the riverside. So today when I want to draw your attention and I want to share to you a little bit about more about the river, yeah? So I always think like in Kuala Lumpur, it has turned into a commercial and um, it's only just like an attraction site. But I would like to bring you together with me to our neighbouring country, which is up north and towards the east. It's a very special country. Why I say so? Because this is the only country in the Southeast Asia who doesn't have sea. They are not surrounded by sea but with the river. So what is this country and where is it? It's actually the name of the country, Laos. When first I visited Laos, um, actually Laos gave me an impression like very natural and simple. It reminds me um, during my childhood time because um, the, the favourite city I like about Laos is Luang Prabang. So when I was in Luang Prabang, there has a big Mekong River. Okay, there and reminds me when during my childhood time I stay with my grandparents. It was also next to the big river by the name of Grand River. And um, the river to me is fun because it's not about just that we can play the water, but important is the food. So I still remember clearly that I love clear water fish and uh, in the Grand River there is one thing very famous which is called the clear water prawns. So this clear water prawns in Malay language, in our national language, is called Udang Gala. So today, I'm not going to share to you it's about the Udang Gala, but I want to talk to you a famous snack in Luang Pabang, especially for the Laotian. So what is the name of this famous snack? And it's actually from the river. So it's called Kai Pen. When I first tried Kai Pen, it's because of Miss Kong. She actually brought me to her village, which is situated in Luang Prabang and by the Mekong River, which is a little bit 20 minutes boat ride. Then when I arrived there, it's by the name of the village is Muang Kong. And it's interesting is the whole village is making the river week. So I was like very impressed and um, I feel like amazing because we are talking about like almost, nine, uh, almost 100 families, so 300 plus people. And I am asking them since when they started to learn, you know, to eat this green grass, or some people will say it's algae. And uh, it's produced, she told me it was actually produced at the up north. 
uh, by the Mekong River and usually they don't get it like very often only during the winter time so summertime if you want to have it it's very very difficult it's hard and she told me like according to her grandparents they say that the great great grandparents um, they used to all depending on fishing you know so they are all fishermen and one day one of the fishermen is actually they don't catch anything he didn't catch anything but when he returned he found like in his fishing net is full with the green grasses so he showed to one of the grand, the old lady, the grandma, and say that you think possible that this can be eaten? And the grandma say, well, I'm not sure, but why not we try? Then we chop, 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 and then we give it to the chicken and see what happened. And the chickens is actually finished it all. So the grandma say, oh, since chicken can eat it, so I think human can eat it as well. So ever since it's like they started to, to think of the way, you know, to keep this algae or turn it into the like a tiny piece of riverway. So today in the Laotian um, culture, they don't eat as just dry, but they eat fresh too. So what they have done is they can just uh, steam the algae. So what ha what uh, before you can actually eat as a food, so what they do is they actually, um, they will bring to the river and they will wash it a few times. And um, amazing is when I follow to the riverside, the river is so clean. Then I think thanks to in Laos, mainly they have very less development. So they still can manage to get clean river. So they will like families and families grouping together and they will have their own working station and they will start heating, washing and heating and washing and heating until the fiber. Because when you touch that grass, it looks like quite hard. So they have to heat it until soften the texture. Then they will bring it home and they will start, you know, to cook it in fresh or after they're cooking it, they will turn it, they will use like a little wooden frame and start making it into the tiny piece of paper and they will soak it into some ingredients water and sprinkle around and lastly, they, of course, they will use the natural sun to dry it. So those who dry it, you can keep it for a year, no issue. So this is when during the summertime, they're still able to eat the river weed. So how do they eat with the river wheat with the dry one? You can take it as a snack, you know, and Laotian people, they just enjoy beer very much. So they always use it as a snack. And of course, you can go with the sticky rice. So it's something like a Japanese sushi, you know, you use the seaweed and you roll it. So you can do it that way or you're just eating as a fresh. And um, I asked about Miss Kong, I say like, what if, you know, that uh, some wishes, some vision, you know, they have. Uh, for making all these uh, river weed is like to them is they think very simple they of course they wish to improve their life so we can see like you know in terms of like sustainable developments they're really looking forward at least this create a decent job for them and also help them on food zero hunger and also they will look into like because the river weed without the river it's you cannot produce it so it's the life below water and um, they wish to sustain it is because of if they have the clean environment, of course, you know, they will keep producing, the Mekong River will keep producing this natural food for them. But of course, they have a challenges because um, the community will keep growing themselves. So they are looking forward, the money they're making, hopefully they can improve the living standard in the village, such as like have a good clear water system, like clear water supply and also for the sanitation, yeah. So I was like really enjoying my day with them and uh, I think so far in Southeast Asia, this is a very unique food to me and it's so rare and you only can find if you go to Laos. Such a hard work.